Okay, are we online? Hey, we're online, all right. Well, thanks for joining us. This is Chuck Ridgway, Automation Technology Manager at Horner. We're here at the Hanover Mesa USA Trade Show on the floor at the uh, McCormick's Place in Chicago. So today we thought it would be fun to do a live stream from our booth here at the Hanover Show. The Hanover Show is in Chicago. It is co-located with the IMTS show, and IMTS is a big machine tool show uh, that's, I think, the oldest or longest running industrial show in North America, or maybe even in the Western Hemisphere. Now, some of us got here earlier. I did some setup last week. Uh, our marketing team got here yesterday and went out and took some great footage of Chicago, so we thought we would show uh, the the footage that they shot yesterday in a little video, we thought we'd open up our show with that. So Marcy, go ahead and kick that off. Okay, that was some great footage. I'd have some really good stories to tell you, but we probably shouldn't get too deeply into that. But I will say that Emily, our marketing intern extraordinaire, looked like a wet rat when she got done from taking that footage yesterday. A very nice looking, uh, friendly wet rat, but a wet rat, rat nonetheless. Okay, so it's not just me standing up here. We've got a whole crew today. Uh, Marcy Tyree is our producer today. She's our marketing person extraordinaire. And the aforementioned Emily is running the cameras. So that's terrific. Here's what we've got planned for the show. So we've shown you the footage. Next, we're gonna do some product demonstrations. We've got some new products that are making their debut here at the Hanover Show. So we're gonna show those to you. That's gonna be exciting. And then you won't wanna miss some interviews we have planned for you. I'm gonna be interviewing Casey Gardner, our product manager. We're gonna talk about some of the issues, you know, that we've been facing when you go through a COVID situation and you have to develop new products. So that'll be something we'll talk about. And then we're gonna bring in our owner, Phil Horner. Now, for those of you who know Phil, please don't turn off the program now. He's really a nice guy, actually, just teasing. I think if you know Phil, you probably love him. We're, we're gonna bring him out here as well and ask him a couple questions, put him on the spot as well. Okay. So we're gonna start with some product demonstrations after I give you just a quick overview of the booth. Okay, so let's start over here. Uh, over here, I've got the Canvas and XL Prime display. So XL Prime is a product that we released back in Detroit at the Automate Show back in June. Uh, the Canvas is a product that we're previewing for the first time uh, at, here at Hanover that won't be released until early next year, but we wanted to give you a preview of that product and I'll be doing a detailed demonstration of our progress so far on that Canvas product. Now back here, we're also showing our Micro OCS series. That is our fastest growing uh, product line. Uh, it was released a couple years ago. It's our, it's our entry level product and it's very cost effective uh, and it's also available from stock. So something to keep your mind on uh, when you've got a lot of products uh, from multiple manufacturers uh, that are being struggled to be delivered. Okay, so that's the micro OCS. Um, over here, we're showing our OEE uh, setup here. So our OEE solution, uh, and it's actually not just OEE, it's actually OEE and lean, but that solution is really a new solution from Horner Solutions. Horner Solutions 
um, is a sister division with uh, Horner Automation and Horner Lighting and we're providing some really nice solutions for the market and the OEE solution is the first one that we're making available. So OEE is, uh, stands for Overall Equipment Efficiency and anybody who's a manufacturer or a system integrator should be interested in that because it's going to allow you to get the most out of your equipment. If you're a system integrator, it's going to allow your customers to get the most out of their equipment which is going to make you obviously very positive in their eyes. Okay, so that's the OEE and Lean solution. By the way, on Wednesday, if you happen to make the trip up to Chicago, we're putting on a seminar at the Hanover Solutions Theater on the OEE, and it's going to be a really good seminar. We're looking forward to that. Okay, so that's what's going on the OEE side. And then over here, uh, we've got newly released OCSIO, and I'll be doing de a demonstration of that as well. I showed that to you for those who saw the uh, video that we did from the Automate show in Detroit, but I showed it to you without power. So it's all fully powered now, and it's basically released. So this is a product that's new, and you could actually order it today, which is exciting. Okay, so that's an overview of what we're showing here in the booth. Next, I'm gonna go give you a few details on Canvas. So let's go ahead and dive into that. So here's our canvas display, all right? So we have four models that we're showing here at Hanover. We've got the Canvas 4, the Canvas 5, the Canvas 7, and the Canvas 7D. If you saw our preview video last week, Casey Gardner, our product manager, talked about the fact we're gonna be showing those here at Hanover. So these two models here, you'll notice, don't have any function keys whatsoever, uh, which is true for most of the models in the canvas line. But because our four inch and seven inch products have been so popular over the years, we went ahead and decided to go ahead and release a function key version of those with very, um, I won't say muffled, but uh, not emphasized function keys from an artwork standpoint. But really all that's new is not just um, you know, on the outside, mainly what's new is on the inside. So one of the big deals about Canvas is it has a totally brand new graphics engine. So you've got all new graphics tools available to you as you uh, develop your programs. So to start kind of simply, you know, you've got uh, all new sets of indicators uh, and pilot lights that are available to you. Um, also, you have the ability to do swiping left and right to change screens if you'd like. Okay, that's new as well. Uh, from a data object standpoint over here, uh, all these, by the way, all these models have all these features. I'm just using multiple models to show the features. So from a data object standpoint, uh, basically, the big difference here is every object period, whether it's displaying data or not, has the ability to have either a custom image as part of the background or a pattern uh, or whatever it is that you need there. So much more flexibility in terms of the objects. And then, of course, depending on uh, the particular data field that you're going to be editing, you have the ability to um, update that particular field and including, in the case of some of the data fields, you can set it up to use those scroll uh, wheels as well. So lots of new stuff going on in the data objects. Moving down here, uh, my demo's a little bit busy, I apologize for that, but we've got a trend object, all brand new trend object with Canvas. Okay, so in this case, we're showing four pens simultaneously. We have the ability to zoom in and out if we want. Um, we also have the ability, if we want to focus on one particular uh, trend line, for instance, we have the ability to disable the other ones uh, or enable the other ones on the fly. So we can really focus in on one or the other. Okay, and then we've got a, uh, we can uh, point in the curve and we can get specific data uh, information for that particular point of the curve. So we'll, um, that's all brand new trend objects there. And then we have a new uh, XY graph uh, which you have the ability to uh, update at the push of a button. So it shows you X versus Y, uh, you know, typical trend graph stuff. But a lot of the real exciting things are in the areas, for instance, with alarm. So we have all new alarm editor. All these alarm objects are brand new, including, it's probably hard to see on the screen, but what we have up here is we have a banner where you can scroll alarm information across the screen. Uh, you can also press that banner. Uh, and then when you press the banner, if I press it properly here, come on, Chuck, right? Let's, let's press it over here instead. There you go, you gotta learn how to do the demo. Okay, so if I press it, I get a, 
uh, zoomed in view of what the alarm is. And of course I can then press an individual alarm, acknowledge it clear, etc. So there's a lot of flexibility uh, in the alarm editor uh, for sure, okay? So another, uh, let's see, let's go back here. Let's clear all those, all right? And let's see if I can exit out there and exit out there. All right, well, I'm not getting the right spot. Okay, well, that's okay. All right, let's go ahead and take a look here. Let's see if we can go to back to the home page. All right, we've also got sliders and progress bars, okay? So these are all brand new, okay? All right, so more choices in terms of sliders and progress bars. And there's the progress bars. All right, we have a circular process bar, that's new as well, okay? All right, and then multi-positions are also new. You know, we've had a selector switch for a while. You just have new choices in terms of your selector switches. I'm just gonna type a value in there and you can see that as I flip switches, that data value will change depending on the particular position I'm in. Okay, so that's just a quick look at Canvas. Come to the show floor and we'll give you more detailed um, demonstrations in person. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move over here. All right, and the next thing I'm gonna be focusing on is going to be OCSIO. So let's take a look at OCSIO over here. Okay, so here's our, uh, here's a, uh, we'll call it a rack or a, a group, whatever we want to call it. I guess, well, what should we call it, Casey? There you go. There's a, a standard base of OCSIO, and in this case, we've got five OCSIO modules plugged into it. So there's a lot of exciting things going on with OCSIO. One of the great things about OCSIO is the fact that in the base itself, you have six IO points available right in the base. Now that can be really useful, for instance, if you're using this with a micro OCS product. If you're using it with a micro OCS, you may only need to add just a little bit of analog or a little bit of an extra digital or maybe a high current uh, solid state output, whatever the case may be. But because you've got those six IO built into the base, there are scenarios in which you may only need to purchase the base to keep the system cost low and get the added IO that you need. So to kind of go through the IO that's available in the base, let me go ahead back here. All right, so the IO that's available in the base, there's six total, and we have two flexible inputs. The flexible inputs are flexible because they can be either digital or analog. And if they're digital, you have the choice between five volts, 12 volts, and 24 volt levels. You can even select your own custom on and off threshold. So that's pretty unique. But those same two flexible inputs can also be used for 12 bit analog voltage or current, so that's pretty exciting. Now, if you want higher resolution analog than that, we have one high resolution universal analog input that's in the base as well. So that is a single point with 16-bit resolution that can handle thermocouple, RTD, voltage, and current. So that's pretty, uh, pretty useful for sure. We've also got a 12-bit analog output that's configurable between voltage and current, and we have two high current, two amp, DC outputs. So if you need to drive a little bit more of a beefy load, uh, you've got that capability. So that's what's built into the base. Now, one thing I didn't really cover on the base is the connections here. You'll notice that these are uh, MJ or RJ type connectors. So you can use, uh, inside your enclosure especially, you can use standard patch cables, Ethernet patch cables, even though this is technically a CAN connection. Okay, so that is much quicker to wire than a traditional solution would be. Uh, you'll also notice here in the second port, this is where you could daisy chain an additional base, uh, or you could insert, like we have here, a terminating resistor that comes with the package. Okay, and then the other modules we have in place here, we've got a, a eight in, eight out module uh, for DC in and DC out. We have a four in, four out relay module. We have a four channel high current relay module. And then we have a, um, uh, I believe we've also got a four channel universal analog input card as well. Uh, and this is the first round of OCSIO modules. We'll have another round of modules available next year. But again, these products are available today. All right, uh, you'll see here that I've got my XL7 uh, that's actually driving this particular base, uh, but it can be driven by our XL series, 
by our Prime series, by our Micro series, and then of course at some point it'll be drivable by the Canvas series as well. Okay, so that's the OCSIO. Again, come to uh, Hanover to check that out. Okay, so next I want to bring in our product manager, Casey Gardner. So Casey, come on in. So welcome to Chicago there, Casey. Absolutely, it's good to be here. Yeah, good to have you here. Okay, so um, this, this is, is a little different than our first little live stream we did, uh, I think, from my basement and from the training room, huh? <laughs> a little different, it's come, come a long way for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely, it's a lot of fun though. So that's, that's still the same. Okay, so I had a couple questions for you, Casey. So, you know, we're coming out of a pandemic, of course, and, you know, we don't re we, we're all realizing the challenges of sourcing products today. I mean, that's on everybody's mind because we can't get the products we want. But from a product development standpoint, what were some of the challenges during the pandemic to develop new products? And then what are some of the challenges today now that we're coming out of the pandemic? I would say some of them kind of affect both areas. I mean, some of the biggest challenges, as uh, many people know, is just parts and availability. So the kind of first thing for product development is as you're developing different features or uh, different hardware designs, um, we literally had to purchase parts in order to assure that they'd be there by the time we actually wanted to deliver a product. So let me try to understand that. So basically, you're designing a part in. You're an engineer. You're designing a part in for a new product. You almost have to go and order the product right now in quantity so that when it comes launch time, you'll actually have something to sell. Absolutely, so that way we don't turn into, okay, we've got the product design finished, but now these parts are a 52 week lead time or sometimes more. Right. So right. that was uh, some, some extra effort on my part um, that again, we we've, we've, feel like we've been ahead of the curve on um, and been able to re release and get these kind of products to market at a reasonable pace um, compared to significantly delaying them two or three years or so. Right, right. That's that's great. I hadn't really thought about the fact that you had to order all that stuff as you're designing it, which obviously is not the normal case. Normally, you would get through the test phase before you really started ordering parts in case you had something you ran into in the test phase. So, um, pretty cool. Now, from a new product development standpoint and release standpoint, so now we're, we're a few months away from having Canvas available, from having Seascape 10 available. We're previewing them here. Um, which products are you the most excited about that we're getting ready to release over, over the next year or so? I think there's there's one that comes to mind, which is, is really one you kind of showed off recently, was the OCSIO um, kind of package and, and release. That's really a new platform that does, uh, it may kind of seem simple, but does a lot different than what, really what we've done traditionally in the past. Um, and is, is a very flexible and expandable platform. So really, even though we've got this module and a handful of modules now, you're gonna see that family grow continuously over time, first and foremost. And I think that's really gonna be uh, what a lot of customers really uh, can, can uh, fall back to or, or drive to for that matter. For right, our, you know, and I know one thing that, that I've, I mean, once some feedback I've gotten in the past from some customers, they'll say, you know, you guys have like three or four or five different I.O. families available for me to add to my product, but which one should I use? Because we have so much choice, sometimes it gets them a little bit confused. So OCSIO, because it works so well with all the different product families, it'll kind of make things simpler for some customers in terms of what products they should select at any given project. Absolutely, that is, that is the hope, is to be able to just not only offer a wider selection or a more tuned selection for what our customers are, are looking for, but to be able to build it and manufacture it and, and be cost effective in that same same sense as well. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you, Casey. Of course. So awesome, uh, you wanna see Casey in person, come to Hanover. Uh, we'll, we'll be here all week, right? Absolutely. Uh, order the We're VL, close to it. <laughs> tip your server, whatever they say <laughs> in those cases. So, all right, good deal. Let's bring, uh, let's bring the boss in. So we're gonna bring in Phil Horner. So come on in here, Phil. Excellent. So this is Phil Horner, he's our president. There you go. Uh, one of the great things about working at Horner is the fact that a lot of people may not realize this, but we are a family business. Um, we're not tiny. I mean, we're an $80 million business, but we are a family business. And Phil and his brother, Alan, own the company. And one of the exciting things for me as an employee is they both set the customer-based culture of our company. So all the customer service that we try and give to you, those standards are all set from the top down by this guy, Phil Horner, and his brother, Alan, who are the owners of the company. 
Now, one thing that I really thought about as I was driving in today uh, was that this is the 73rd year of Horner Electric, right? I wasn't around when it started. That's good enough. But know. close. But you were close. So the, the company was founded in 1949 by your parents, George yes. and Mary, right? Tell us a little bit about mom and dad. Well, they um, drove us to um, get involved in the business early. At nine years old, I was in the motor repair shop doing motors, and I realized after doing that for five years, I wanted to do something different. Thus, we got into electronics. Right, and we've been into, I mean, you've been into electronics. Your first electronic products were back in the 80s, right? Yeah, actually 75. So. Okay, long time ago. Yeah, a while. Absolutely. So again, uh, it's really exciting to have uh, to work for a family-owned business that really cares about customers, and um, that, that cares about customers. And we got to tell Casey to be quiet over there because oh, he turned his microphone off. He's smarter than we are. That's why he's the product. Manager. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good deal. So anyway, that was the first thing I want to talk about was George and Mary, and I want to mention the fact that Phil's parents. I had the pleasure of knowing them for many years and they were wonderful people and they're definitely missed for sure <laughs> yeah absolutely okay let's get to some topical type stuff so let's talk a little bit about uh where you think we stand in terms of our ability to deliver products to our customers uh in general and then also as it relates to maybe how our cut co our competition is doing where do you think we're at on that well that's a that's a double-edged sword here when you talk about availability, the industry has been hit really hard by COVID and the supply chains have really been hurt. And if you follow the pattern of electronics, the older the product is, the more difficult you are going to have sourcing products. Well, we were on a path five years ago of adding a lot of new products into our, pro into our product line that has allowed us to bring these newer technologies in and making them available. But like Casey and Chuck said earlier, we ordered a year's worth of production on these new products. So we are in a great position to support all these new products that are coming out. I'm gonna tell you though, we will have some problems with the older stuff just like everybody else, but we have options for customers. Absolutely, so we've been, our engineering staff has spent a lot of time on product substitutions, part substitutions, that sort of thing to keep products flowing. And some product families are in better condition than others. I mean, uh, for instance, the micro series, we have, right at this stage, we have a good supply of the micro series. Uh, that's an excellent product, whether you're already a Horner user or whether maybe you use a competitor's products and you just can't get those, uh, that's an excellent option that you should also consider, for sure. Okay, then one last thing I did want to ask you about, and that is maybe what are some of the thoughts you have for the future of Horner Automation? What are some of the things from a direction standpoint you can see us going, whether it's a product, whether it's a focus, whatever that might be, because this guy here really is our idea guy at Horner. I mean, we get ideas from engineers, from our product managers, even from people like me, but most of the ideas come from this guy. Uh, where do you see things going in the future? About half those ideas are not very good ideas. That's true. So we, we successfully talk him out of those, but there's a lot of good ones too. I, I'll say one thing really quick. His idea, the OCS product, the all-in-one controller product, that was his idea. Now there were a couple very, there were a couple products on the market, but not much, very, very little. So I worked for the company when he came up with this idea of combining the PLC and the opera interface in one component. And frankly, I thought it was a dumb idea. What do I know? And then we went ahead and built one anyway. I played with it for about five minutes and I said, oh, I'm an idiot, he's smart. Yes, it's a wonderful idea. So that's just an example of why we get his ideas and, and not mine. Some of the newer things that I've got on the backboard trying to develop is the next generation processors. Okay. Um, these are brand new processors, but I have to be working five years out. And we have already identified the processor for the next generation of this. So you know that this is gonna be a very live product 
for a long time. There are other areas that I'm also focusing in. You, everybody hears of the IIoT environment. Well, all of our controllers can act as an IIoT interface. However, there are, sometimes there's not a convenient way to connect wire to where you need to get the information from. So I'm working on a, a plan with engineering on uh, Bluetooth and LoRa to try to expand the remote sensing piece to bring right. that up into the, into the product line. I am also having a very, very heavy focus on artificial intelligence. I think machine learning and artificial intelligence is the next place that will be, will trigger an advancement in the machine control process. So, okay. That's Excellent. where I'm going, that's what I'm thinking about. Very good. Well, thanks for that, Phil. Yep. Thanks for joining us today on the show. Outstanding. Okay, so I think a uh, couple things I want to mention before we wrap up. First of all, this is an important show for us, obviously, because we're displaying Canvas for the first time. And oh, while we're thinking about it, Marcy, go ahead and hit the uh, Seascape or the PC button over there, and let's give them a quick look at Seascape 10. So if you come to the show, we'll give you more details, give you a demonstration of Seascape 10, which you should be seeing on the screen there, which is not only designed for all the new Canvas graphics, but it's also designed with a new user interface as well. All right, thanks for that, Marcy. All right, so this is an important show for us, but we have more uh, shows coming up. So let's start with Nuremberg. And the Nuremberg show is the largest PLC and drive show in the world. And if you are one of our European customers or a customer where it's convenient for you to go to Europe, we would highly encourage you to check that out. We're gonna be there in November. The Horner Europe team is working really hard on that particular uh, display. It was, I was there back the last time they held it. I think it was 2019 and it was fantastic. Okay, so after that, we've got several more shows planned uh, and that includes uh, the PowerMation show. So PowerMation is one of our best distribution partners. They have events periodically. Their next big event is gonna be in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, the Great Plains Automation Expo. So we're excited to go to that. Uh, me and my colleague Tom Filipek and I believe Phil Horner will be attending that and showing new products. So come see us uh, in, the, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota if you're an upper Midwesterner. Okay, another place we're gonna be if you're a West Coast person is we're gonna be in Vancouver, Washington, which is right on the border of Oregon and Washington. So if you flew into Portland, for instance, you'd be right there. All right, and we're gonna be there with our fine distribution partner, GCC, all right? And then next, finally, I wanna mention, we're gonna be in New Orleans at WEFTEC. So that is a water-focused show, and it's really kind of more of a Horner Solutions show, but we're still gonna be displaying some Horner automation products as well. So again, I would encourage you to come see us for that one as well. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and wrap up now. Uh, thanks for joining us for our live stream from the show floor in Chicago. If you want more detailed demonstrations, if you wanna to talk to myself or Phil Horner or Casey Gardner, uh, I would highly encourage you to come to the show and come see us here in booth, uh, what's our booth number? 134047, that's it, six digit booth numbers. Oh my, it's almost like remembering a phone number these days. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna wrap it up from the show. Thanks once again for joining us. And if you're watching this on Monday or Tuesday or later, give us your comments so we can respond to them. We love to see your comments in the YouTube uh, comments section. All right, take care.